And it's that time again. Thank you for joining me for another episode. I am the Colonialist and this is Solenopsis Geminata. You heard right, the tropical fire ant, which is most famously known from the Ants Canada channel. I purchased this colony back on the 28th of July from the ant lady. What was that I hear you saying? That was eight months ago. Yes, it was. And I've kept this species incredibly quiet simply because a lot of people at the time lost their queens. And I wanted to make sure that mine were not just successful, but I had the right information gathered together to pass on to you if you was thinking about keeping this species. At the time of doing all my research, I found that information was actually lacking online. Even Ants Canada himself doesn't give great care advice on this species, so people who get the species have a lot of learning to do. Of course, I know that Mikey, he always says don't keep the species unless you're native to the area, but we are exotic keepers. In the UK, it's legal and many people end up with this species and sadly, they're losing them because of poor information that can be found. Now, I found that a lot of people are being told to keep their queens at around 27 to 28 degrees Celsius. And I personally believe that this temperature is just far too high for the queens. They can't handle it. And I believe that possibly contributed to so many people losing their queens at the time. Speaking to another keeper from a country where they're found, he kept his species, his colony, sorry, at 25 degrees Celsius. And that's what I decided to do. And as you can see, eight months later, it's done nothing to stem the growth of this colony. There is easily around 10,000 workers now. And I say that because of the volume of space that they take up. They're taking up an entire large dirt pod. They're taking up an acrylic nest. And they've also turned their outworld into a satellite nest which meant I had to hook up this outworld that you see now. I've given them a vine so it goes all the way down and absolutely no substrate because I found that when I used other barriers such as anti-climb, um, I used baby oil, I used out rubbing alcohol and baby powder and every single one of them encouraged this species to get substrate from another part of their nest and stick it to that barrier. So far the only barrier that seems to be working for me is fluon. I can certainly say from experience that this is not a species that you want escaping. I mean, a few times I've accidentally disconnected parts of the nest and I've paid for it heavily. At least 100 workers got out each time. I also had the manager to fit through the vents at one stage because the minor workers are just that small they can fit through. And again, easily 30, 40 workers got out before I was able to solve the problem. Now I actually have a, a rim of flu on around their lid so that they can't get to the ventilation bits. This is an incredibly challenging species to keep. So please, if you are thinking about keeping Solenopsis, either Invicta or Geminata, both of them sort of grow the same. They have very similar attributes, except obviously Geminata has super majors, Invicta doesn't, and they have a slightly different caste system. But all in all, the species are incredibly similar in their rearing, in their caring for, and in their growth rates. Honestly, all in all, if you're watching this and you're not an experienced keeper, you're not able to dedicate the time, and financially, you're not able to keep up with the financial requirements of this colony, they are far more expensive to keep than other species that I have due to the amount of food that they consume, compared to the amount of housing that they need, and compared to the other care requirements that go along with keeping an exotic species like this. Not only to the fact that within a year or a year and a half, you could have well over a million workers that you need to find housing for. Ants Canada solved this by having an incredibly large, I believe it's three foot or six foot tank. I'm not exactly sure on the size dimensions, but as you know from his videos, his tank is incredibly large. Now mine, I've gone for modular setups and that means that I can expand the setups as needed I can um, add the space as I need to. And right now I actually have Antboy UK making me a custom setup for this species. And that does run quite a cost. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into how much, but it's not cheap. I will save all that information for another video when I actually have my hands on the setup and I do a review of it and then I'll let you guys know the price. 
So right now I'm going to touch back on my previous video, the ultimate guide to raising an ant queen and founding colony, which was just over a month ago now. And I do apologize for the amount of time that's gone past between my videos, but life on my end has just literally been non-stop. And I, if I could split myself in two, it would make life a hell of a lot easier. Or if I could clone myself 10 times over, I'd have the time that I need. But honestly, at the moment, I've barely been able to find enough time in a day to be able to sort out half of my life let alone catch up with the ant keeping videos and honestly i do apologize because i do try to prioritize this i am still getting footage in the meantime to be able to catch up and keep you guys entertained i won't diverge too much but really i know this species needs a high protein diet they do because of the amount of brood that they have but in the beginning when you're founding the queen and you're founding the colony they do not need a high protein diet. The protein needs to match the amount of larvae that they have. And that is purely the only reason that you feed protein. So what you need to do is really up the amount of carbohydrates that you're giving the colony. Now I like to use 150 mil test tubes because I tried the water feeders and that was an absolute big mistake. I've now lost two water feeders to their previous uh, outworld which they have buried underneath substrate and there's no way I'm sticking my hand in there because it's guarded by about 200 workers which will just sting the crap out of me if I try to get it and I know you guys might find seeing my hand stung to death quite entertaining but if that's something you want to see Ants Canada did that for about 10,000 subscribers so maybe if I get that many subscribers I might do something silly like that but until then I'm not interested in hurting myself. I respect that this species is aggressive, I respect that this species can hurt me and I treat them with that respect knowing that they can do damage. Now luckily I am not allergic to solenopsin so I don't come up in bad reactions. I've suffered so far about 50 to 60 stings and I've been perfectly fine. It wasn't something I was willing to record because of the amount of swear words that were leaving my mouth at the time and the fact that I had to then hoover up around a hundred workers, which I really didn't want to do, but I had no other way to save them. And of course I've got two young children running around my house and I'm not risking them getting stung by these ants and finding out whether they're allergic to them or not. Sadly, it was one of those sayings, I guess, where you could put, it is what it is, or I had to do what I had to do. Now, normally I will try to save my ants if they get out. By that time, it was a bit of an emergency. I came straight into contact with the enemy at an unexpected point and all best laid plans completely fall apart. There's absolutely nothing I could have done differently at that time. So I don't promote doing it, but at the same time, it's a species that if it gets out, you can be in trouble so fast that you just have to take action. And at the time, that was the only action I felt I could take. You know, I always want to be honest with the people who view my channel and my content and i will say even as an experience keeper even with the finances right even with the space even with everything set up to properly care for this species they are such an incredible challenge and they're so aggressive that really and truly unless that's something that you are 110 percent dedicated to and prepared for to deal with to sort out to deal with those issues to be stung don't keep this species because <laughs> I'm learning those lessons the hard way and it's something I enjoy I enjoy the challenge I enjoy that aspect but you know I have other people to consider and they don't necessarily enjoy that aspect when they help me out obviously when I'm away at work my missus takes over the care for some of my ant colonies and this is one of the ant colonies that she's been attacked by and she's really not happy with sorting it out so if you have people help you out with your colonies you kind of need to consider them as well because honestly I've learned that this species is just 110% on the challenge scale. To have a fully established colony at least with the amount of workers that Solenopsis can pump out within eight months in itself is an incredible challenge let alone everything else that comes with the species and as you can see I'm going back to the first clip that I showed you this is not long after I got the colony and I started to work out and decide how I was best going to keep them and since then I've just learned so many lessons that I would honestly like to pass on to you guys don't be silly about ant keeping some of it is serious and these are one of those species where it, it plays the serious level on this hobby 
with any pet that I take on, whether it be a dog, cat, lizard or ant, my ethos is they are for life, not just for Christmas. So I will never try and rehome or abandon one of my colonies. I will, I will never let the challenge overcome me. And many people do. You see people online, they get this species, they realize they made a mistake and they're trying to sell them on. And it's just an absolute nightmare for them that they have to struggle with in between. Be real about getting this species, be honest with yourself and really look deep into what you need to do to be able to keep them. And I don't mean to keep droning on about it, but seriously, they're not a light-hearted species to keep. You know, you can keep Mesobarbarus easily, Polyacus dives easily. There's a whole host of other species that you can keep so much easier than this species. Right, so I'll stop being boring. But moving forward, there's quite a lot planned with this colony due to the way that they grow. There's always some kind of expansion going on with them. We have the new acrylic nest to look forward to once that arrives. And I plan to do a hyperlapse of them moving into it. I believe that should be quite interesting. And hopefully we should be able to see a lot more of the workforce with that episode. And also moving forward this Sunday, that is this Sunday, the 4th of April, which is Easter. You can find myself and a load of other ant keepers on a live chat with Formacast. So if you join us on Formacast, he's very well known for a podcast, not so much for YouTube. He doesn't actually have many subscribers on his YouTube. So if you could check out his channel, subscribe and join us there on Sunday. So for now, this is me, the Colonialist, signing out. And I hope to see you guys on the Sunday live chat on his channel with all your questions. If you feel you want to ask me more questions about this episode, do so.